that there is an organism with the ability to survive the vacuum of space and the potential to change the future of medicine, and you've never even heard of it. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the tardigrade. Tardigrades, also known as water bears or moss piglets, are microscopic aquatic invertebrates that have adapted the ability to survive to extreme environments. So that is actually a model of a tardigrade that I made at Caps. Um, it's paper shade and it is um, not quite accurate, but this is a real thing. And so tardigrades, um, for some background information, are about 10 to 50 micrometers long, meaning that they are the size of a speck of dust. They eat microscopic organisms, algae, and even other tardigrades. And they live in two types of environments. So they're tardigrades that live in freshwater, which can be found in lakes and rivers, and tardigrades that live in the film of water that gets trapped in between lichen and a substrate. So you can actually go outside, scrape some lichen off a tree, soak it in water overnight, and the next day, as you examine the water under a microscope, you can find hundreds of tardigrades. So like I said earlier, tardigrades have adapted the ability to survive to extreme environments. For example, they can survive negative 200 degrees Celsius, over 100 degrees Celsius, exposure to radiation, a lack of oxygen, a lack of water, and keep in mind, I did say they are aquatic organisms, and they can survive 6,000 atmospheres of pressure. To put that one in perspective a little bit, the bottom of the marina trench, also known as the lowest known point on Earth, only experiences 1,000 atmospheres of pressure. And finally, they are the only known organism to survive the vacuum of space. So they can do all this because of a process known as cryptobiosis. Cryptobiosis is a general term to describe a state of metabolic inactivity. Basically, the tardigrades dehydrate their bodies, fill it with a sugar solution to protect their organelles, and curl into a little ball to minimize surface area and volume. Tardigrades can survive in a state for decades at a time. And again, this is a process that allows them to survive those environmental pressures and those extreme environments. So I'm sure at this point a lot of you are wondering why. Why have you never heard of a tardigrade before? And there's a common misconception that tardigrades were recently discovered. But in reality, tardigrades were first observed in 1676, meaning that we've known about them and their abilities for centuries. The real reason that most of you have never heard of tardigrades is because of a larger problem that we have in the scientific community, which is that we fail to teach and research about topics that have no economic value. So I'm going to prove to you how that's completely wrong and how tardigrades have the potential to change the world. So when in cryptobiosis, tardigrades experience a significant amount of DNA damage. Now this would kill any other organism, saying as DNA is the most important and fundamental information for life. But tardigrades have found a way around this. When they come out of cryptobiosis and are rehydrated, they can repair that DNA. Now this is monumental. The ability to take broken DNA and repair it is unheard of, and we know nothing about how tardigrades are able to do this. Now this ability, has the possibility to create cures and treatments for diseases, disorders, and even cancers. It has the possibility to save countless lives around the world. And even looking further than that, a current innovation in the tech industry is to use DNA to store computer information, changing those A, T, Cs, and Gs to zeros and ones. As that becomes our new future, the ability to repair this DNA would create another economic value for tardigrades. So how do we begin to research such an immense topic when we know nothing about it? Well, I created a basic experimental setup to look at the rate of DNA repair among different species of tardigrades. So the three species I chose here are a little special. The first one is a freshwater species. And freshwater species are less tolerant. So they are actually unable to survive as many extremes as other species. So I hypothesized that this species would have the lowest rate of DNA repair. Mesobiotus hexworthy, the middle one, is the most commonly found tardigrade. And the last species up there is known as a tolerant species, meaning that it is able to survive more extremes than others. 
So I hypothesize that this species would have the highest rate of DNA repair. Now to establish this rate of DNA repair, I wanted to look at the amount of DNA damage before, during, and after cryptobiosis. With the idea being that before cryptobiosis, there should be no DNA damage. During cryptobiosis is when that DNA damage would accumulate, and then after they come out of cryptobiosis, that DNA damage would recede as they are able to repair it. So the way to examine the amount of DNA damage in an organism is by using what's known as a common assay. So when DNA is undamaged, it is very compact and tight, creating a sphere-looking effect. However, when, when DNA is damaged, those pieces break and become fragmented. So when you run DNA, which is electrically charged, through an electrical field, it gets pulled to the positive end, creating a comet effect. So one can actually measure the exact length of this comet and have an exact quantitative number of the amount of DNA damage there is. So I actually was able to do this procedure with um, a tardigrade, and you can see my results here. So each of these little black streaks is, um, a, is DNA damage. And this whole point of this experiment was to create a gold standard for a tardigrade, to create, to find out which species has the highest rate of DNA repair and we'd be best to use for further research. And even though I didn't have enough time to finish my project, the fact that I was able to get this um, common essay to work was huge. It took a lot of trial and error and a lot of time, and so now that that basic fundamental has been established, um, further research can be built upon it. So again, the ability to repair DNA is huge in our society. It has, again, the ability to save countless lives all around the world. And targets are just one example of the immense amount of topics that are overshadowed in our scientific community. Unfortunately, institutions and companies look at just the face value of something and determine whether it has, whether it receives funding or not. And they don't look at the big picture. They don't look further than what the first thing they see is about this topic. So tardigrades are another example of how a seemingly insignificant research topic or a small organism has the ability to have a huge impact on our communities, our society, and our world. Thank you.